Folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin, and I'm your host. Um, we have a returning guest, friend of the show, Judith, uh, Sister Judith. Um, she's been, like I said, she's been on the show before. She's a criminologist, and she's a published author. And I brought her on because, um, you know, locally, a young lady has, has shown up uh, missing. And as of this recording, it's, uh, boy, it's been close to two weeks and everyone's just feeling sick about it. There's been no trace whatsoever about what happened to her. So I know Judith Yates, she's, she's expert on this stuff. She's expert on this stuff. And uh, I, I've asked her to, to do this interview so that she can share with us, you know, um, what she knows, her experiences and things like that. Sis, thank you for being with us today. Hey, thank you, my brother. Thank you for inviting me. Now, you had mentioned that you wanted to, you had, had some things maybe to read from a, a book of yours, one of your books? Yes. Could yes. And, and I don't want anybody thinking I'm promoting my book because of this, but this is something that everyone needs to know in these kind of cases. I do a lot of volunteer work with missing persons, and I just want to um, kind of throw this at people. And I want to, I want to apologize if my dogs bark in the background. I'm working from home today, so they might yell their opinion. So... Um, this is from my book. It's called How to Recognize the Devil, Common Sense Self-Defense, and it discusses safety for children, for adults, for elderly, uh, missing persons, and I do not make a profit off this book. It goes to a charity, and you can get it at my website at www.truecrimebook.net. And this is what I wrote about a missing child who has been missing from Nashville for years now. There is no such thing as someone disappearing, even in a magic act. There is always a reasonable, usually simple explanation to how magic tricks are accomplished. After all, the only magic in magic is making people believe it is real. The hmm. reality is a reasonable explanation exists that no one knows. And therein lies the heartache of families, friends, neighborhoods, everyone involved um, in, in knowing about this case in uh, knowing about this uh, situation. Wow. So there's a reasonable explanation. Yes. Um, you know, um, I know that child trafficking has been the buzzword for the last few years. It's been going on, you know, since the Mayflower above the rock in our country and it um, continues. And it's not as common as we would believe as children abducted by known persons. Now, 75 to 80% of children who go missing are taken by known persons. Family, for example, a bad custody battle, um, friends, acquaintances, maybe it's the person across the street. You know, we, we tell children these lies about stranger danger when really, who is a stranger to a child? You know, yeah. it could be and who always um, cleans up in the school gym it could be the nice guy across the street. It could be the woman who lives next door. I mean, there's, there's no such thing as a stranger to a small child. So nonetheless, um, those abducted by others are usually found within a 50 mile radius of where they went missing. Hmm. And uh, some things that, you know, you, I think you had asked me earlier what a community needs to do in this case. Yes. First of all, a community needs to tell the truth. I'm still working a case right now that 15 years later, the family is saying, oh, and by the way, she did this. And that's only because the police asked or rather interrogated because they needed some answers. And it was something so simple. I think it was like smoking cigarettes or something at, at you know, 11. Mm -hmm. And you have got to tell the truth because the police aren't gonna act as judge and jury. The police, you know, doesn't care that this person is smoking weed or the family's, you know, doing this or doing that. The goal is to find the missing person, in this case, particularly a missing child. So what needs to be said is the exact truth. I've also worked a case where, you know, they were saying that the child was missing, but they didn't want to discuss the meth production that was going on behind the scenes in their house. Mm. Okay, that's a huge, that's a huge helpful 
you know, clue there. And secondly, what's more important, this, this child's life or the fact that you're doing something illegal and it could be as simple as cheating on your taxes. But nonetheless, um, people do it. And most important is just tell the truth. And the second is contact law enforcement right away. You know, don't, well, she's probably at, you know, because every cop will tell you they would rather be proactive than reactive. Mm. Proactive, not reactive, overreactive. Right. Okay. And, and, you know, that's another thing that I discuss in this book is, you know, we worry so much about somebody abducting our kids, you know, the spooky stranger in the, in the shadows, but we need to worry about who's around this child. You know, we need to think that through um, their friends, their parent, the parents of friends, the person across the street, learn certain behaviors of someone who is going to do harm to a child and red flag those and trust your gut. Mm. And that's the most important thing that I can say about missing persons. Tell the truth. Um, tell the truth about your situation. Full disclosure. Don't hold anything back. Good, bad, or ugly. Don't hold anything back. You said the, the police are not there to judge you. They're there to find that individual, particularly if it's a child. And contact the police immediately. Police are saying, hey, we'd rather be proactive than reactive. And you said 75% of the um, so-called disappearances, so-called, it's like you said, hey, there's no such animal as a person just off the face of the earth. The, no, nobody disappears. Uh, right. So contact the police and, and um, but sis, what, I mean, what happens after so many weeks, so many months? I mean, what are the stats telling us at that point? I mean, what do we do? Don't give up. Never give up. I worked with people whose, whose family member lived on the streets in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Now, you can imagine, if you're familiar with that situation, trying to find that individual. They just, you know, they're gone. They're, they're who knows where they are. They are not giving up, you know, homeless in Los Angeles, a drug addict in and out of jail. It doesn't care. It's a loving, it's a loved member, beloved member, and they want that person found. Okay. It's been years. They're not going to give up. I know a woman whose newborn was stolen. Mm. He's probably in his thirties now. She's not giving up. And that's what people need to do. Um, Keep flyers up. Keep handing out flyers to everyone in your neighborhood. Work together to offer a reward. Get it on the news. The most important thing is get it out there. I have a, a friend that's a author, a true crime author, and he says, this country has ADHD, meaning we're going to read something and we're going to go, oh, how awful. And 10 minutes later, we're going to be worried about something else. Mm. You know, we, we worry about something and then poof, we change our minds and, and something else is worse. So because of this and because of this huge influx of media we have now mm -hmm. online and think of all of these, you know, Facebook, my page, uh, Twitter, tweet, everything. We're so bombarded with it. Get it out there, post it, post it and ask friends to post it, put together a search, you know, go literally ask people, can, can I look in your house? I mean, an honest person will say, hey, look, your child's missing. Sure, go in my backyard. Yes, yes. You know, look in the shed. But it's like, well, I'm not letting you in my yard. Now, I have come across that where we had a home, an abandoned house, where we could have had some information out of it. But the owner of the house is saying, no, 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 I don't want to be involved in this. And this kid's been gone for a long time. What do you care? That happens, Okay. And we fought like you wouldn't believe. But anyway, um, look. Don't give look, up. Look. Oh, no, Thank not at all. Don't give up. Do everything you can do and just keep doing it and just keep doing it. And you said you've actually, now, you've actually worked with some people where they've been looking for their loved ones for years. Is that correct? Wow. Yes. It's something. But, you know, then again, I, I, then again, I can see it. I mean, I've, you know, I... Our, one of my uncles I just loved to death, 
you know, we didn't really, cons- we weren't really consistently doing it, but we were forever right. trying to find our Uncle Lawrence. And, but his daughter right. was looking for him too. She was probably more, she was more consistent and faithful than us. And she, she finally found him. She finally found him. And I, I just thought, my uncle, I thought he was gone. Last I heard, he's in Harlem. I, I actually was in Harlem looking around for him, looking for my uncle. No sign. But I can understand that. Keep looking. Don't give up. Keep looking. No, and find out, you know, this, this, she's a girl, the, the person that's missing in Kentucky yes. that we're discussing. Okay. Yeah. Find out who her friends are. Find out who she's hanging with. Find out in her school. And another thing, you know, we're talking about teenagers and little, you know, telling the truth with them. And and you need to tell them, look, I'm not judging you. And if you're doing something bad, that's not my business. I'm just trying to find her. You're her friend. Tell me. Yes. If she was doing something bad, she's not in trouble for that. Right. And and make that make that come true in the end. You know, uh, we're we're not angry at you. We're not angry at you, the friend. We just want to find her. And I know you do too. Make it a positive situation. Yes. Well, Seth, so we're gonna in this uh, interview, we're gonna obviously post your website, and you have a YouTube channel too, right? Isn't that correct? I do. Yes. And it, the link can be found on my Facebook page. It's called Best True Crime. And it's where I give uh, information, tips, um, new book releases, mm-hmm. places where, you know, of interest, like old jails. Um, it's it's just sort of a mishmash of everything true crime. But mm-hmm. I don't glorify the criminals, and I always think of those left behind. Yes. Sis, thank you again. Uh, we'll put all that in, in the description here so folks can uh, get a hold of you and and get a hold of that book you just read from us too. I think that's going to be helpful to to the family. I, I, you know, it's helped a lot of people. And again, it's it's safety for everybody from elderly to babies. And it has worksheets in the back and mm-hmm. all kinds of information there. Again, I don't make any money off of this. I wrote it because people need it. So uh, you can find that again at my website. Okay. How to recognize the devil. Thank you, sis. We will be in touch, okay? Um, yeah, you better call me if you need me. And thank you so much, sweetie. <laughs> you know me well. <laughs> you know you me better. <laughs> thank okay, you. Okay, well, be safe out there, and I'm really hoping this little girl is found safe. Oh, me too. Me too.